Hello everyone. In the last video, we have seen that the brain is the control panel of all our actions which we take, whether we know it or not. So, we have seen that brain is the main decision maker. We also know that the spinal cord has various nerves which transfers the information for the thinking. We also know that thinking is a complex process and all the neural connections are concentrated in the brain. Now, neuron system is very complicated. It is connected to the brain. Now, this neuron system is divided into two different systems, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Let's understand the difference between these two systems by drawing a table. So, here we have the central nervous system and here we have the peripheral nervous system. Now, the central nervous system includes the organs such as brain and the spinal cord, whereas the peripheral nervous systems include the nerves which are outside the brain and the spinal cord, that is the spinal nerves, visceral nerves and the cranial nerves. In the central nervous system, you can also see that it has a controlling center that is brain. But in the peripheral nervous system, it has only a function to transmit the signals from one part of the body to the other, which means it does not have a controlling center. So we have seen the difference between the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. But we also know that these systems assist each other. Like if the impulse is generated from the central nervous system, it needs the peripheral nervous system to transfer its signals to different parts of the body. And in the similar way, the peripheral nervous system brings the impulse from all over the body to the central nervous system. Hence, we can conclude that the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system are dependent on each other. Now, let's have a look on the controller of the central nervous system, which is the brain. Now, brain has different regions for different activities. Let's understand it by one by one. So, here you can see that the brain has three parts. So, the first is forebrain, in the middle is the midbrain, and in the last is the hindbrain. Now, we will understand each part separately. When we talk of forebrain, the forebrain has two parts. That is the cerebrum and the olfactory lobes. Now, cerebrum is the largest part of the brain. So, it has been divided into two hemispheres. The first hemisphere is responsible for taking all the impulses which we receive from the sensory organs, like touching, smelling and all. So, this is, this is only the region which is responsible for giving us the sensation of being full after eating. The second hemisphere involves the effector of the impulse, like what decisions have to be made are mainly done in this region. So, we have seen that the forebrain is the main decision maker part of the brain. Now, when we go to the midbrain, the midbrain has thalamus and hypothalamus in it. Now, these midbrain is also the connector of the forebrain and the hindbrain. It generates a signal for all the involuntary actions which happens along with the hindbrain, which means it functions along with the hindbrain. Now, when we talk of hindbrain, it has three parts, which we call as cerebellum, medulla and pons. Now, when we talk of cerebellum, we know that the functions of each part of the brain is different. So, cerebellum will also have different functions. So, the cerebellum performs the action of coordination, that is adjustment of the movements and also the posture of the body. Now, the medulla is responsible for all the involuntary actions such as heartbeat, sneezing, coughing, blinking of eyes and so on. The pawns are mainly responsible for the respiration process. So, we had a look on different parts of the brain and what different functions they perform. We have also seen the nervous system functions. But we have noticed that the brain and the nervous system perform a very important functions. So, they need to be protected in a special way. Brain is kept or is placed in a bony box called skull. Now, this skull has a fluid which is a shock absorber. 
So in this way, the brain is protected in this skull. The central nervous system also have a covering so that it is pro protected from the various shocks that our body goes through. Now we know that the brain takes all the actions except the reflex actions and the nerves carry the information back and forth to the brain. We have also seen that which part of the brain is responsible for different actions. Now what next? How are these actions possible? We have seen that the information is generated, transmitted to the brain, the decision is taken and the receptor knows it. But what next? The chemical and the electrical impulse are not able to move your muscles or your hands or legs. So the simple notion of movement of muscles is by changing the shape and arrangement. These muscles have a special proteins which change their shape and arrangement when they get a nerve impulse. So in this way, the nerve muscles or the muscles change their shape or get shortened to move your hands. And that is how we are able to move our hands freely.